Hi there, I'm Scott Hall with Moroso Performance, and today we're in the Moroso R&D department, and I'm gonna go over with you one of my favorite products that I got to help design years ago, and that's a leak down tester. Now, Moroso has sold these for decades, many different versions, and the one we're gonna go over today is a part number 89603. We're gonna show you, for those of you that are new to what a leak down tester does, exactly what comes with the kit and what a leak down tester does. And for some of you seasoned racers, I'm gonna share with you some of the tips and tricks I've learned over 20 plus years of dealing with race teams and engine builders on the, some of the different ways a leak down tester is gonna really tell you what's going on with your engine. The main part of the leak down tester is this box. Now this box has a couple different fittings and adjuster knob, but the most important part is this gauge. This is your zero to 100 gauge. And basically when you're setting this thing up, you're zeroing it in to get the needle to read zero by turning this knob. Now this knob's just connected to the regulator which is attached to your air. We need to have a minimum of 80 PSI coming out of your air compressor and a maximum out of 150 or so. But basically we're gonna get this thing squared up to zero. This is coming in from your air source, whether it's your air compressor in your house or your shop, that plugs into here. And then coming out of here is gonna be that three foot hose that's ultimately gonna be in your hand. So when the whip hose is in the engine, you connect it up and now we're gonna get our reading based on where this needle goes. Now these boxes are all individually calibrated here at Moroso Performance in Guilford, Connecticut. So whether you have it for a month or 20 years, you can send it back to us and we can recalibrate this thing within half a percent. That's what makes this thing one of the best units on the market. It's a modern style of a long-standing component that's been in everybody's trailer and ray shops. First hose, which is a three foot longer hose, this is what's gonna actually plug into your box and be your air source to the engine. But the most important hose is the whip hose. This is a two foot hose where your end that screws into your spark plug is. Now this hose is what ultimately screws into the engine and allows you to then connect up to the hose in the box. This whip hose we're gonna show you is also how to figure out what cylinder you're on and coming up to it to find top dead center for our reading. We also give you three different types of uh, adapters for the spark plugs. This long one, which is very popular nowadays with a lot of the longer, deeper cylinder heads. We give you a short peanut style one for an older type of cylinder head. And then we give you a multiple use one with a 14 and an 18 millimeter thread on it. All right, let's hook up our leak down tester. Now we've got three hoses in our hand. Right now we need two of them. First thing you need is your shop air source, whether from your shop or your trailer. We're gonna put that into the inlet side. Now we're gonna take the longer of the two hoses and we're gonna plug it into the output which is a universal connector. So if you got your own hose that you built, any connector will go in here. Now at this point, we wanna zero this knob and get it so our needle is at zero. And that's how we're gonna get ready to use our leak down tester. All right, we're gonna find top dead center on the cylinder that we wanna check. Now we're gonna take the whip hose, we're gonna screw it into the cylinder that we're looking to test. Now this thing has an O-ring on the end, so there's no reason to tighten it down with a wrench or anything. Just run it in by hand and we'll get this thing set up. Now, take all the spark plugs out of your motor when you're doing this. Obviously, this engine doesn't have a starter on it, so we're gonna use a breaker bar. But when you're at the track or on the dyno, you can bump the starter, turns the motor over. In the case of this motor or a blower motor, you'll use a breaker bar. So now to figure out where your cylinder is coming up, at the racetrack, it's loud. So sometimes what I do is when I'm holding this thing and I'm listening to the air to blow by my finger, sometimes you gotta just rest it up by the side of your face and when you feel the air coming out, you know you're getting close. But either way, as we turn this breaker bar, we are waiting for the air. You hear it. We know we're coming up close to top dead center on this. So now I'm gonna look at my balancer, look at my timing pointer, and get this thing to be about two degrees before that cylinder is at top dead center. My suggestion is get your balancer set up so you have a mark at 0, 90, 180, and 270 so you can tell what cylinder you're coming up on. In this case, we're going to go to 0 for the number one cylinder, and I'm going to move this thing two degrees before top dead center. Please take the breaker bar off the engine, whether you're doing this or on a blower motor, because when we put air in this thing, if it decides to turn over, this thing will go right through your head. We don't want that happening. All right, as often as you've seen me on these videos, you've also seen our 582 Dino Mule. Now we're using this today to obviously show you how the leak down tester works. We did a little uh, pre-fitment before and the one cylinder we're gonna show you now is not spectacular, but we're not here to talk about the condition of this motor. We're here to show you how the leak down tester works. 
So we're two degrees of four top dead center. We want to get that piston in a position where it's basically going to be right at the top. The rings are going to be compressed in a certain way. It's going to be the most accurate way to get a good reading of how this engine is working. So we're going to take the end of our whip hose, take our leak down tester, take this end, in we go. Take a look at the leak down tester. Yeah, we're at about 31% leak down. So what this thing is telling us is that we've got reasonable amount of blow by on this thing. Now, let me show you a couple of quick uh, tips with this thing. Right now, I've got the exhaust is open, carburetor's here, and we got a vacuum pump. I'm going to take this hose off. I put my hand over this. I got to feel some air going by it. This is telling me what's coming out of here is what's going by the rings because it's filling the crankcase and coming up and out of this fitting. I can also put my hand over the exhaust port, and I feel a little bit coming out here. Now, if I open the carburetor up, I don't really hear or feel anything coming out of here, so it tells me the intake valve is sealed up nice because you would feel some air coming back out of here. But that's kind of what the three points we're looking for is, if we do have 30% leak down, can we diagnose maybe where it's coming from? And in this case, the amount of air that's coming out of here, yeah, it tells me the rings probably need to get replaced and get a new home job on it. That exhaust valve, just do a quick touch up on the seats and everything, and I'm pretty sure it'll seal that up pretty nicely. All right, so that was the number one cylinder, which again, wasn't that spectacular. We're gonna come back here and we are gonna do the number seven cylinder, which we know was better. And again, I just wanna show you a point of perspective on a good and a bad cylinder. So again, whip hose go in. Just tighten it up by hand, good to go. Now we're gonna take our breaker bar. There's our air coming up. So now that I know that's coming up, I'm gonna find my spot in this case, 180 degrees and about 182 degrees. There we go. Take my whip hose, plug it in. There we go, 15%, not bad for a motor like this, pretty acceptable. Now again, if I come over here and feel around, I don't have a lot of air coming out of my fitting, but I feel a little bit of air coming out the exhaust port here. So again, that tells me much of that 15% is probably coming out the exhaust valve. Again, a little valve job and we're looking good. But that's what we're looking for when we do a leak down test. So I wanna end this video with a couple quick tips and things that I've learned over the years of dealing with some phenomenal engine builders and race teams when using a leak down tester. Obviously at Moroso, we're in the business of selling leak down testers, but making vacuum with a lot of our oiling system components. So getting an idea of exactly what we're looking for and how to understand what you're reading is very important. One of the most critical things I think and I recommend all the time is leak down an engine when it's hot or it's warm. You want it to be as close to race condition as possible an engine's expanded, everything's kind of in its working range, that's when you want to leak it down. Now, if you leak it down cold, you may get a higher reading because obviously things are going to contract and maybe air is going to blow by in some areas that normally wouldn't. But when you compare to all the cylinders on the motor, you're going to know if you got a motor that's happy or a cylinder that's maybe hurt. Now, I was talking to you about how if you got air going by a valve, you know, that could be a point of an issue that you may have. But I've also re-rolled the motor around to try it again. And I've also taken it that when the air was in it, take the rocker arm off, take a brass hammer and whack the top of the valve. Makes a big booming noise, so be ready. But sometimes just having that thing reseat itself, maybe it seals up a little bit better. And I've watched my leak down change five to 10% just by having a little something stuck on the valve or something like that. It can happen. Now, if you're getting a weird reading up top, and it's got a lot of blow by going by the ring or the piston. You can also roll the motor back down to bottom dead center, come up two degrees after bottom dead center. What we're doing now is we're seeing the condition of that ring and the piston on a fresher part of the cylinder wall that doesn't see as much combustion as the very top does. And if the numbers are the same, it's gonna tell you the ring or the piston maybe got some issues. But if when that thing is just above bottom dead center and it's a better reading, it tells you maybe something more with the top of the cylinder, a gasket or something like that. A really good engine builder taught me that and said, don't just read what's at the top, read the condition at the bottom also. Leak down tester is gonna be a great tool to have. It's really gonna keep up on the maintenance of your motor. And you're gonna be able to give good feedback to your engine builder when you bring this thing in for a rebuild. That's important. Any questions or comments? Comment below or go to moroso.com.